Hi, my name is Derek and you're watching a tutorial for uh, Bayside Games, our dev blog, and the game we're developing is called Robots Can't Jump, and we're creating a particle manager system. So in the previous tutorial, we were trying to extract the physics position, and the best way to do this, I th think, would be to actually turn that little line of code, which seems to be used quite a lot, into a little function. So it's going to be returning a constant vector, yep, that's right, and we're going to call it get physics pos, or get rigid body pos would be the best because it's being obtained from the physics rigid body that should do the trick uh, and it's got, uh, that's looking all right tidy sense tidy sense is very good okay so we're just going to use get rigid body pos plus all of that so that should all still be okay I should see why it's complaining about that that should be okay and this is very interesting um we have an old trace line here oh, of course okay we need to uncom there we go so i was just wondering why that that would be there okay so now let's try using that it'll make the um line of code here a whole lot shorter and we'll also put that into the update if i can find it or was that the update? Yeah, I think that was the update. But we'll use it for the construction too, because it has to be the same thing. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we've still, <laughs> still got the same problem. Um, what I think needs to happen is that we need to have a closer look at why that's happening. Okay. So when we're drawing our model, I think that if we actually removed uh, these little transforms, you would see um, that this point is being rendered at the center of the model. So what I think is needed here is actually to transform that point through the same matrix. So just to test that assumption, we're just gonna remove this transformation entirely and basically just make it an identity transform, which means it will have no effect. Let's try that. Okay, I see. So this is actually not a problem with the way we're doing it there. Uh, what we actually need to do is have a, another look and see. It's interesting. Okay. So that wasn't it. Uh, so that's actually good because it means that we won't have to do some complex uh, vector transform just to fix that thing up. So it looks like it's actually drawing him in sort of the bottom right-hand corner, which is kind of interesting. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually think a little bit more about this and um, let's go back to the particle containers rendering stuff and compare that with the actor render and now you'll see here um, immediately when I look at this function I think hang on we're transforming the position into view space so that should be okay and impulse has been initialized for us So when we look at the axis create rigid body, it's not doing anything too fancy with the initial position. It actually just assigns that directly into the um, uh, the world transform. What I think we should do is have a closer look at how the particle is constructed um, in add particle because that's where its initial position and everything is set up. Now, when I look at the um, position setting code, immediately I think this doesn't look quite right because if we look at the comment for the particles position it's the position in model space of a particle relative to its parent particle containers position which we wrote earlier but if we look at the comment for the member variable mpos here it's not the same thing so it's the position in world space of the center of this particle system we're actually assigning this world space center position which is the position of the actor to a model space position and that's not right so what I think we should do here is actually let's set it to the origin of model space, which would be zero on all axes. And let's try that out. And we're also going to make the particle a lot bigger because my goal for this is to have him at the center of the player's bounding box because that's the origin of the player's bounding box in model space. Um, that's a very important point and we have to get it right. You know, you know if we can't get something at that point, we're not going to be able to use this particle system properly. So let's try this. The reason I'm making the point bigger is because once he's in the center of the character, uh, you may not actually see the point because he'll be obscured by other geometry. And that's looking a whole lot better. You can see it's centered straight on the character. 
That took him fantastic. It's actually quite, quite a nice um, special effect. Um, as you can see, it sort of makes the character glow. So it's funny how sometimes you'll find these special effects by accident. I'm really liking that. Um, and I think that our coordinate system is now working correctly too. Okay, now we can start doing some really fun stuff like making the particles animate. So one of the most um, fundamental things about most particle systems is that the particles have a lifetime and they come and go. Um, we've already got some lifetime support. So if you look at the particle class, we already have a lifetime, which is the number of seconds this particle affects the loop. But we haven't really hooked that up to anything. Right now it's just sort of dangling, and we put it in there for the very good reason that we're going to start using it now. The place where the uh, lifetime is actually managed is not in the particle object itself, but in the particle container class. So if you look here at the update, we're looping through all of our particles, and we're just drawing them. Uh, so we, we're sort of disregarding the fact that they have a lifetime right now. But what we should actually do is we should step through our particles and manage their lifetime. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we're probably going to need a few tries to get this right, so bear with me, but we'll, we'll get there. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is actually make this my color object static. going to use the lift initializer, which is supported in C++ and C. Just to tidy this function up a little bit, because this function is going to grow. It's going to have a pretty big loop in between. Okay. So let's pull these guys out of here. Just temporarily. Uh, it's a little bit messy to have them outside, but I want to focus on what's inside this function. Okay, so that makes the function a lot shorter. Looking good. So we're stepping through all the particles. So the obvious first step is, um, you know, um, for this parent particle, we update it. So if you look closely here, you'll see that I'm doing this m particles brackets i, m particles brackets i. So it's obtaining that particle element a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually not do that a lot. I'm going to make a reference. M particles is a bunch of pointers, so that's actually going to return to me the right time. That's fine. And then I can just replace all these with particles. So that actually makes the code a lot more readable too. Okay, so this is actually going to be used up here. What we're going to do is look at the particle's lifetime. And we're actually going to add the delta time. Fix the float. So we're converting our fix to a float. This is probably not very optimized. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is, since we're going to be doing this with so many particles, I believe it's actually good enough, a good time to move this and change it into an IWS. Now, one of the things, just before we start, you'll notice that in the uh, constructor of particles, I am not initializing these things. And there's a very good reason for that. <coughs> In C++, when you don't initialize things in the constructor, they're left uninitialized. So they'll contain garbage. But if you look closely at the particle container class, which has an add particle method, this is actually where everything gets initialized. So this is a performance improvement for us. By not having these things set in the constructor, we're not setting them twice. Um, we sort of, we don't encode this in any rigid way, but we expect to just initialize everything in this piece of code here in the add particle class too. So just a little bit of explanation there. So we can still use a floating point number to initialize this, but what might actually be better is just to use IW6 twice, which becomes an integer conversion. So that's gonna be super fast. And when we look back at the particle container, that's all good, all right. So we remove the lifetime, we remove that delta time. So now we can do it directly because they're both IW6. Now the next thing we want to do is check if the lifetime has become less than zero. So zero times T on one is always going to be zero. So in fact, we don't need to use that macro there. Pointers. 
Now, when we hit this point, this means that the particle's lifetime has expired. So what are we going to do now? This is where things get a little bit interesting. Our particle is stuck in this long array, as you can see here, we're using an array. So it's stuck in the middle of that array, and we want to actually remove it from the array entirely. But at the same time, we want to make it easy to find where to add a new particle later on. Um, this is going to be quite tricky for us to figure out. So for now, what I'm going to do is um, use a little trick. Um, we're going to swap this dead particle with the last particle and then just decrease the size of the number of current particles by one. That means that we won't have to do too much shuffling around the memory and the particles are relatively small, so we can do that. So we're going to swap the dead particle with the last particle in the list. So all we need to do there is um, use an intermediate. I know some people say, oh, you can just draw it, but I think it's simpler in theory to see what I'm doing here if I just use an intermediate. So we're going to do this. We're going to create a new particle. In fact, I'm going to move the upper side here just so that we don't have to keep recreating it. So tensor will be equal to current particle. Our particle, because it's a reference, we can do this. It will be equal to the current particle at the end of the list. And there's going to be an edge case here if we only have one item too, so we'll get back to that in a minute. So we want n particles, and n particles minus one. And then finally, we can actually remove decrement n num particles because we no longer need the item that's, that was at the end of the list. That's very good. Um, now, if we only have one item in the list, how is this gonna work? So it's gonna make it, and this is the interesting part, if we have one minus one, that's actually not gonna work. So what we need to do is not do the swap if we only have one particle. There we go. So we just don't do the swap. We still decrement it nonetheless, um, regardless of how many particles there are, as long as we've got more than one. We will have more than one if we hit this point, so that's good. And this could potentially happen thousands of times, hence the um, moving of this object up here. And there's one more thing we're missing, and that is give particles. We're probably going to get a compiler error now, so I'm just going to check whether we will. Yep. Okay, so I was expecting this. Um, the reason we're getting this compiler is it's looking for an operator equal method in the particle, but we don't have one. So C++ wants you to provide this. Because over here, the particle is a full-blown class, and we're assigning one class to another. That means in C++, you need an operator equal. So we'll just go and add one in. That's pretty easy to do. So this is our assignment operator. Um, you get given a right-hand side, and then we return this in the left-hand side. Okay, so we'll just copy all the values. Um, That should be all we need to do. So this is a very fast function, so don't be fooled. This is going to happen very, very quickly. We could ha have used something like um, a mem copy or something. <coughs> but for now, I think this is sort of the C++ approach, and it's going to be pretty fast anyway. A mem copy would involve the function call anyway, so we might as well do the copy ourselves. Okay, let's get this compiled. Oh, it wasn't happy about that. Um, so it says that our operator equal is already defined. Let's, say, let's investigate. Um, I don't really believe that. Oh, this is quite interesting. Um, why would it say that? Oh, of course. Yeah, so this is um, what we were looking at before. Um, I initially didn't want the operator equal to be called here. But that's okay because we're now allowed to do that. So let's compile. And that's our operator. 